Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. And I still don't, unless you're my camera, in which case, I have a lot to explain. What's up everyone, my name is Joseph and I've gone against everything I know and love by putting up a Christmas tree in November, well before Thanksgiving. Anyway, welcome to my devlog series where I go over the progress I've made on a very unique and never been done before project of creating a 2D roguelike platformer. In previous episodes, we've gone over the movement system for this game, we implemented a very simple but workable combat system, and I've talked about the gameplay loop and progression system for the game. And with that all in place, I figured it was a good time to add some actual content into the game, so that's what we'll do in this episode along with implementing the designs that I hinted at in the previous episode. Now you may notice throughout this video that some of the background clips look a little bit out of order, but that's just because they are. Due to my incredibly short attention span, I kind of just jumped around to a bunch of different areas of this project during this sprint, but I wanted to organize the video in a way that made sense so the background clips don't really line up perfectly, but I think you guys will be able to follow it nonetheless. That all being said, let's just get into the video. If you watch the last video, you'll have a general idea of how the talent system is going to work in this game, and if you didn't, I'll give you a very quick rundown of it. At the start of each run, you'll pick a specialization which contains 10 possible talents. Throughout the dungeon, enemies will drop random talents from that specialization, and after each floor, there will be some type of currency or mechanic that lets you weight certain talents so you have a better chance of getting the talents you want within your chosen specialization. There will also be a mechanic for choosing a secondary specialization, which will just have a lower drop chance and less control over what you get from that secondary tree. These talents will most likely end up being the main source of power for your character, so I really wanted to nail these down before moving too much farther. So I started off this sprint by building in the back end for the talent system. I started off by just making a list of all of the talents I wanted in the game initially. Right now there's three trees with 10 talents in each, and I wrote up some documentation outlining how each of them will work. These talents are more or less static buffs that will just kind of shape the archetype or the playstyle for the run. After spending way too much time planning all of these out, I modified the character UI to display a list of the available talents. I added in the ability to weight certain talents so for testing I can really choose what I want to receive as a drop, and I made it so enemies could drop these talents based off of a drop chance assigned to the player. I decided to just stick to one talent tree for now while I build up the back end, but eventually like I said there'll be up to three talent trees to choose from. Next, I got to work building each of the offensive talents into the game, and although it would be super exciting and entertaining to go over each of these different talents and explain them, I'm just going to leave brief descriptions of each of them on the screen. These talents will scale both with the number of talent points it has, so how many times you've picked up that talent, as well as scale with different attributes. The idea for this is that no matter what class you choose or what build you want to go for, there will be talents that will help you out. So for example, if you want to go a really heavy arcana build, you can still choose the offensive specialization and you will still get arcana scaling talents. Now it's also worked in so that no talent will do nothing, so everything has a chance to do something, some will just do more depending on your build, so it should encourage a lot of player choice when it comes to weighting these talents and choosing which talents you would like to receive as drops more frequently. Some of these talents may end up being stronger than others, I really don't know the balance for these, but that's something that I'll figure out down the road. That's a problem for future Joseph, and right now, I'm just happy that they're all working. So at this point, I had 10 talents built out and working. You could receive them as drops from enemies, and they increased your character's power. And I decided it was time to actually implement some of the level designs that we had been working on. As I've mentioned previously, my wife is doing the designs for this game, and she'll just kind of send me designs when she gets them done, so I don't really get them in chunks, I just kind of get them sporadically, so I'm just going to cover everything in this section. Overall, we spent quite a while coming up with a style that was both clean looking and easy for her to design, uh, because with how short my attention span is, I know for a fact that I'll just ask for random things designed at random times, and I wanted to make sure that this design style was something that she could kind of throw prototypes out easily with, but overall, we came up with something that I think we're both happy with and fits all of the specs we were looking for. The design style we came up with was a very clean style with kind of blocky shading, so very simplistic shading, but it still looks really good and I think the style is very distinct. 
So after this style was established, she got to work on creating the tiles and character designs, and while she was doing that, I took a look at the current UI and decided to change it up a little bit. I redesigned the character health and XP bar, nothing permanent, this will change, but something that just looked a little bit better than just a solid red bar. I also built in a little system to handle visual cooldown indicators, so nothing serious in place, I just threw some simple icons on screen with a simple radial cooldown, uh, but there's a system now to where I can plug in basically any ability and throw it on screen and assign a cooldown to it and it should handle that properly. So at this point the new designs for the tiles and the area was ready so I implemented the new tiles as well as some new background elements all designed around a graveyard theme. I want this first area to kind of be a ruins or a graveyard. In addition to the new level design we also had new designs for the starter sword as well as a new blobby boy. With these final designs done it was compared to the previous version built different as the kids say. I assume. I'm 26, I work in a cubicle, and I've been social distancing since I was 16, so a lot of these social and commonly used idioms are kind of lost on me. Anyway, with those changes, the new design was now in place. I want to let you know that a lot of these designs will probably get changed or tweaked in the coming months, but just in general, I wanted to go over the overall style of the game, so when you see new designs pop up, it's nothing that's too jarring or out of the ordinary. This is the style we're going to go with moving forward. Anyway, now with the level design done, it was time to move on to the level design. And by level design, I mean I made a random map generator so I didn't have to actually design how the maps would work. I want each of these levels to feel very similar to Dead Cells in the sense that there's individually designed rooms, but you can kind of go through the entire map in a fluid way, rather than something like The Binding of Isaac where each room is an independent scene. I have nothing wrong with that style, this is just the decision I made for this game specifically. So I created a few room presets and followed a very simple tutorial by Blackthorn Prod on generating some rooms in a random order, and surprisingly, the code worked perfectly the first time I ran it, assuming that I wanted to create an infinite amount of unconnected rooms that eventually crashed Unity. But after some thought, I decided that that gameplay wouldn't really be too enjoyable, so I changed it so the rooms actually connect and you could progress through a map in a normal way. It took a while to work out some small bugs that caused some unreachable rooms, but after a while, I was able to create some prefabs for each of the room designs, throw them in the script, and it would assemble them in a random way where all of the rooms were reachable and playable. The way this works is very simple, there's nothing super complicated about it. There's just a bunch of prefabs with exits, and the code just stitches them together in a way that makes sense. But this method allows me to easily drop in boss rooms or treasure rooms or special event rooms in a way that makes sense, so I'm pretty happy with how it it's working. I may change some specifics on this later down the road to make it more manual or at least add a little level of control to it, but for the most part, levels are generating correctly now and I have a way to drop in the special rooms that I want to. So with this done, I decided it was good enough for now, it did what I needed it to do, and it was time to move on. So now that the level generation is complete, I want to take some time and really design and plan out these rooms rather than just throwing some in there now to test. I, I actually want to make sure these levels feel good to play and that might take some time. So I'm going to cut the video here and we'll pick up the next video with these levels generated as well as kind of adding in some post processing and some visual tweaks to make the game look and feel like an actual game rather than just a really rough prototype. There's just a lot of small things that I run into that just tell me like, hey, this isn't a real game. And it really makes it difficult to actually figure out what's enjoyable and fun about the game if I just keep getting pulled out of that immersion or of that gameplay feel. So I really wanna take some time and iron out a lot of those kinks and make it feel like an actual game. There's not a lot of actual content, but if I can make it look and feel like a game, I think I'll be able to make some better decisions based off of that. So that's what I'm going to focus the next video on. So if you're looking forward to that and excited, be sure to subscribe subscribe to the channel so you're notified when that video goes live if you're not subscribed already. And while you're down there, be sure to leave the video a like if you did enjoy it and follow my Twitter while you're at it because why not? I don't tweet much, but it makes my ego bigger and makes me feel better. Anyway, that's all I have for this video. I hope you guys did enjoy it. I am Joseph. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your week and I'll see you next time.